They say that uh, the lawless DSS, <laughs> they don't come again with another pattern. As soon as the Carlo change his uh, uh, judge, where the judge handling his matter, he say these people don't provoke. Oh, now the lawyers go to them, may they go see their clients so that they go feel know the next step where they want to follow for Mazina and the Carlo case. And these people refuse them access to Mazina and the Carlo. This thing is happening today as I talk. <laughs> My people, the one of the Mumu question, one of the Mumu question where you never hear for your life, <laughs> you go hear them for today's video. How can somebody come outside to ask Ndibo? Um, they are entrepreneurs. They are all over the world and they are uh, uh, people that are doing business. Why can't them use that power to change sad ease <laughs> in Nigeria? Just imagine the question somebody is throwing for an Igbo man to answer. Don't worry. I'm going to bring you the video for you to watch. But let's hear what the Mazin and the Carlo lawyer said. A lawyer, a Jim before we come back and proceed. Watch the video. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. This video is being made from the premises of the DSS in Abuja. You all know who I am. My name is Aloy Ejimako. I'm the special counsel to Mazin Namdekano. On my right is Barisa Nemeke Jofo. Behind me is Barisa Patrick Agese, who came from Enugu. And to my left is Barisa Mandela Umeborok. All of us, all four of us came to the premises of DSS to meet with our client today to discuss what happened in court on 24 on the and on the way forward on his case but we were not allowed by the dss to meet with our client we came by few minutes to 2 p.m until now that i'm speaking to you which is some minutes to 5 p.m we have not been allowed to meet with our client so we're just about to leave and we have our suspicions. Our suspicion, which is credible, is that the DSS and the federal government of Nigeria, they are not happy that our client requested the judge handling this matter to withdraw from handling the case. If not this reason, what other reason could explain this unconstitutional behavior of preventing lawyers from meeting with their clients who is on that trial. So we need the world to know that this thing furthers the what the government of the day or the DSS has been doing that actually complicated the trial of this case that culminated in our client being frustrated and losing confidence in the judge who was handling this case and which resulted on 24th uh, September in our clients requesting the judge to withdraw. So we decided to make this video to inform the world about what is happening and we are going to back it up with a press statement, another press statement letter. Thank you. Thank, thank, you. thank you. Thank you. Welcome back, my wonderful people. Uh, this is the moment that uh, the legal team of Mazi Namdekalo visited uh, the DSS to make sure they prepared their defense. And you see, these people refuse access to uh, for them to see Mazi Namdekalo. I'm going to bring this video for you to watch. And this video is who, that Mumu question that I'm talking about. I want you to listen very careful, and you will have something to reply to this particular comment. Do you think that the Igbos are still being suppressed? And why is it not something of a paradox that a people so enterprising will now be asking for federal intervention when they will have shown the world that, hey, we really don't need you that much. Our enterprise, our sense of duty can get uh, the southeast part of Nigeria to become the next Dubai, for example. Why is federal intervention so important? Thank you very much, uh, Steve, for that uh, uh, stimulating question. There are certain things that you do in life and they facilitate development. The most vibrant people of this country that have the velocity to develop all parts of this country, they are like vectors, adibos, because we are everywhere. Like you go anywhere in this country, you must find an Igbo man. Don't talk about the globe now. 
because the globe is replete with Igbos of different professional backgrounds doing well, not doing havoc to any system or economy they find themselves. So, if Nigeria has delayed the possibility of developing the area that should be breeding these sources and uh, facilitators of development for this long, it is not difficult to understand why Nigeria has been moving like a, an elephant with a clay of feet. The only way a man who has three or four children can imagine the question that a reasonable journalist is asking somebody. <laughs> for most of you people that didn't understand this question, let me explain something for you. It's like somebody is asking you, why is Ali Ibo not develop? Why did Ali Ibo, there's no good federal infrastructures in Ali Ibo? Okay, now, the answer is this question is that, are you expecting the Igbo people to build a federal road? Are you to use their money or to task themselves to build a federal infrastructure in South East? Are you expecting the Indibos to put in order all the whole federal schools, everything concerning federal, federal like everything, or concerning the state? Let me say the state. Erasal. In the or federal light, everything concerning federal in Igbo land. You're expecting the Indi Igbo to do these things with their money. My people, <laughs> these people, this one I waiting that they call. When somebody don't see you finish, he just sit down and ask you useless question. No matter, okay, let us use China as an example. So, are you telling me that the government of China just fold their hand and all Chinese went out there and work and become what China become today? That is a very big lie. The government have a very big role to play for all the states to develop. Let me tell you something. When you come to Europe, any place you go in Europe look alike. Because what they discuss in their parliament, we are going to build this here, and we are going to build this here. We are going to build this here, and it's going to look like this, it's going to look like this. They have the same culture, they have everything is functioning the same way you see it in the north, you see it in the west, you see it in the south. The same way everything look like. But the problem of Nigeria today is that they never consult the indigenous peoples before they created Nigeria out of their business. Okay, now they have created Nigeria. Nigeria is a functioning as a country. But it cannot achieve anything because now people are reacting, saying, hey, this contraction you put us together, we don't want to be here. We want to stay on our own and it become a problem. So you cannot work. You can't achieve anything. There's nothing will work in South East because 90% of the people, the inhabitants living in South East, do not want to be part of Nigeria. So the government don't want development to come to South East as well because if they want development to come, they let them open the sea ports around south east and you see that lagos will be empty all the places that you see what people doing busy will be empty south east will boom because me that is here i want to ship my my goods to my village and sell it in my village i don't want to take it to lagos but you are conditioning me to take my goods from anywhere around the world to bring it to lagos and transport it to start is when I'm going, it may fall on the road because of the bad road, and I will lose everything that I've suffered for. So you see the condition they have conditioned in Debo. Everything you want to bring down, it will go to Lagos. And before you will take it to wherever you want to take it to. But what what of if I take it to Calabar? It's a little bit closer to me. I think it's three or four hours, it will be in my home. What I why not I take you to River State? Why not I take it to other states behind? Or what I don't, I dream the seas that connected the villages in Igbo so as I make it a, a seaport, a, a, a mini seaport where, where I, can, I, can, I can clear my goods from. 
they don't want all those things okay look at currently you see the train station all over nigeria you see the train station so they just run i say this one is being done by governor Les Oti. they launched that thing they call the train in aba so what happened to other states in 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 southeast so they are not good of using train but you travel to white man land you take train you connect to every city where you are going to see the mentality of nigeria people with the people inside they want to do everything to suppress indeed but when Igbo people come outside that we are marginalized you don't even ask yourself questions and most of you that defending this new this year government most of you that defend you don't have anything in your own state you are zero they don't regard you and you are busy defending this particular government. So when Indi Igbo is crying, there is something they are crying. There's probably in, there's one address in Igbo that says, when a child is crying and pointing hand, when you see a little child crying and be pointing hand, if you go there, either you see his mother or you see his father or something that's scaring him is there. So when the Igbos are, are, are lamenting, or talking at or calling at or saying that they're marginalized something is wrong somewhere okay look at they run to commission um to say that i've finished second niger this one second niger this one. but i know yes that one is okay but there are so many things that the indie boss is lacking we are lacking so many things you understand so bring seaport in I just al allow ibos to let them have seaport around a nearby and you will find no neighbors in lagos the reason that the car low so that there will be tranquility in sadness you said no that means you don't want good for ndibo this is the reality my people please share this video and contribute because this question when i when i see this video i was saying is this man okay answer answering this uh, uh man that responded this question so you see the reason why that Igbos, the Fed, the government need to do something, not the Igbos need to do it. They are already hard working people. You understand? So if you want them to turn Southeast to Dubai, give them Biafra. So that if somebody from Anambara is not doing the work that appointed him to do, everybody will call him at hey president, you are not doing the work you are assigned to do. So that they will not say it's tribalism, it's because it's Yoruba or it's because it's Hausa. I've said this in one of my video today, but I'm repeating it again in this particular video because this is the problem of Nigeria. When Yoruba man is doing wrong, and you are trying to point that Yoruba man, they will turn it to tribalism. Eh, Yoruba people will come out to defend their own. When Hausa man do wrong. You point that out someone, the house of people will come aside and defend their own. Likewise, when an Igbo man do something, the Igbos will come aside to defend their own. But when it comes to everybody is on their own, I think there will be a little, um, there will be a more understanding to the people because they know each other. So when the uh, a bony man is doing something as the president, the other state will say, hey, we don't like what we are doing in the sun. So we don't see him as a president from a body. We see him as a president of Biafra or prime minister of Biafra. You understand? So when somebody from Abia State is doing something, you would not see him as a, because we know that we are one. We are Hebrews, of course. So we are Biafra. Or we are, we are, we, so we are Biafra. We have to question whosoever that is there. When a Paibo man is doing something, hey, a Paibo man, why are you doing this thing? Work for our people. So not when Igbo man speaks, hey, you've got a fish, Igbo man, oh, is Igbo man, oh, is Igbo man, oh, in Germany, this one, that one. My people, share the video and drop your own opinion in the comment section as they hurt.